What's going on, FA Nation? Jonathan here with James Grande. This is the Quick Pitch MLB DFS podcast and live stream recording here for Thursday's four game afternoon slate starting at 1 p.m. Uh, James, we took a minor vacation here. I know there's only a couple of days left basically in the MLB season. I think we have about a week to go for MLB DFS before the playoffs. You got married last weekend. I went out there, so we had a little bit of a little hiatus on the stream and podcast for the last couple days but we're back refreshed and a quick little four gamer where the top price pitcher is lucas giolito who has been (laughs) dog water for the majority of the season we talk about it all the time these short slates can be pretty gross when it comes to pitching especially on two pitcher sites like DraftKings and yahoo and that is what we have here today sir Yeah. First off, it was great to, you know, have you at the wedding and we were able to catch up afterwards, get some coffee the next morning too. I sent you some, uh, hopefully a good bagel shop as well. Shout out. Some nice New York bagels. It was great. So that was nice. And shout out to Aaron Judge, who also just hit home run number 61. And then uh, shout out to all those in Florida, hopefully staying safe due to the hurricane tonight and into Thursday and into Friday as well. So just a couple notes before, because it's going to be a quick podcast. So just, you know, some quick, some quick notes, John. But uh, yeah, happy to be back. A little four gamer. Definitely a hiatus when you get married. I don't know for all those that don't, you don't really look at your at the Fangraphs pages too much, John. Right. They were not in my vow book. I did not see them when I was reading off my vows this weekend. So it really feels like a missed um, opportunity to start rattling off some ex fips there while you're you now you're talking about it, right? It's could, have like, to, could have told my now wife why Shohei Otani might win the right. MVP over Aaron Judge, and it's like sure. Yeah. You know, you're one for eight for taking out the trash, but like your, <laughs> you know, your ex fip of taking out the trash is really like, you know, uh, 480. You know, like you're good. You know, like the odds of them doing there is all the same. So, anyways, joking aside, this will be quick. Four games. Like I mentioned, look at Giolito's a top price pitcher here. We talked about it before. He's been very difficult to play. I know lately he's been okay. Nine strikeouts against Detroit last time was good, but it was, you know, it's against Detroit. Uh, I know he just faced Minnesota, six innings or five innings there, two earned runs. It's okay, right? You know, look at his recent games. He's only had two games over 15 fantasy points. Obviously, one of them, the most recent. 9K? Are you paying 9K for Giolito here? I mean, it's he just hasn't he just hasn't been very trustworthy this season. Obviously, by his 5.05 ERA and the 1.5 WHIP. I mean, I'm not against it. I think I've said. Look, I've said it all along. Like. All year long. Him and Lance Lynn have been very unlucky this year. I think the White Sox, as soon as they fire, Tony La Russa will be in better hands and the mojo and everything's going to seemingly just be better for them next year. I think this team has too much talent to not even potentially finish over 500, right? G. Lito, for what it's worth, has been significantly better on the road this year. 384 ERA compared to 643 at home. Less home runs and in, in and more innings. And he's 6-2 and two on the road. You know, four and seven at home. He has pitched fairly well against Minnesota. Three, three ERA, seventeen fantasy points per game, and the strikeouts have been there as well. The, lately, the one, so. the nearly one seven whip is what worries me there, right? Ten sure. hits in nine innings, only but been able, fortunate enough to only allow three runs there. Sure, and it's definitely thanks to like very good strikeout yeah. output. He's definitely been putting Twins on and then just striking people out to follow so he gets, yeah, he, I mean, he struggles against the top half of the line but he gets to the bottom half of the yeah. line he, he sits down, him down. So, yeah. yeah i mean it's definitely i'm definitely with you where it's like slightly concerning but you just we just kind of have to take a stance somewhere sure right there's just nobody you got else. a returning eovaldi but he could be limited yeah. on the pitch count uh not minnesota that the 24th are playing for anything but i mean n- neither are i think everyone on the slate is anyone playing for anything the phillies <laughs> the only Maybe, team playing yeah. for anything. Baltimore is technically not eliminated. Minnesota 24th in OPS in September against righties. So, yeah, I'll be, I'm in on Giolito. Hopefully he finishes season strong. Ranger Suarez probably chalk on this slate. Probably, yeah. He's been pretty good. He's been the best pitcher late. on the, of the slate, most yeah. likely. You know, okay. uh, Evaldi's had moments. Erod gets Kansas City. A couple of good starts for him the last two times out, both against the White Sox. You know, Kansas City, we know, it hasn't been all that great. Maybe Eduardo Rodriguez is a look here. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Erod is a play. 17th in OPS in the month of September against lefties for Kansas City. 
Top half of the league, I guess, in average, in Woba, though, 17th, so bottom half of the leagues. Yeah, I, I can get behind some Murad. I think both you and I think he's a better pitcher than what he has yeah, something been. was going on with him this year. I don't know what it was. Yeah, but... yeah. and do we even know what the, like, the absence was? Like, I don't know. He... I, well, I don't remember seeing what it was about, so... It was, like, an undisclosed absence that he just was out for and then right. he returned and then so yeah i think this is another spot for him to continue his yeah, it's almost three months with something Literally. so or with, with something right yeah. like yeah. catcher position short slate actually for being a small slate some decent options real muto salvi wilson Contreras against the lefty if you want to go against suarez rutschman against Ivaldi. better has a lefty jan gomes against suarez if you want to go there so not awful catcher spots of course reese mcguire or Connor Wong, you know, whatever one you want to go there. All those guys are in play. Yeah, I think every single one of those guys are in play. And then when it comes to value, where are you going, John? Like, oh, I said the Red Sox whatever. guys, probably. Just the Red Sox guys, right? Yeah. Whoever. Connor Wong didn't have a hit the other day. We had two RBIs, two walks. You know, bases <laughs> loaded walks for and sacrifices for Connor Wong. And then Reese McGuire just keeps doing Reese McGuire things. He homered off Garrett Cole. Yeah, two homers in that series against the Yankees, and you know some power there. Though one of his home runs was was the unicorn. It was only a home run in Yankee Stadium, the only park in baseball that would have been a, a home run. So yeah, that's your catcher spot, first base. What are you thinking? I mean, you could play Abreu. For I mean, actually, I don't really want to play Abreu. He's just really no upside this year. There's been no power. Reese Hoskins is home run or bust kind of guy generally better against the lefties generally better against lefties, better against lefties. <laughs> Mount Castle's, Mount Castle has been kind of raking lately not that he's hit for any power but four straight double digit fantasy point games 375 average over his last 10 yep. in Fenway so like definitely a bump there because we're away from uh, the most impossible park to hit in <laughs> yeah. right-handed batters now in Baltimore which uh, I oh, we're just gonna play Cassis 2200 yeah, Tristan Cass is... Three hits yeah. and a homer the other night. I don't know what he's got going on tonight, if he's even in their lineup, but hits now in a five of the last six, two home, three home runs in those six games. There was some worry, right? Wasn't... Was Boston... The Boston faithful talking, like, kind of wild, right? That wasn't Red Sox fans. That was, okay. like, Yankee fans comparing him oh, to okay. other people. Well, they shouldn't. He's one for one with two walks tonight. So he's yeah. reached base uh, he's another a, he's three He's a walk times. machine. He's got 14 walks to 16 strikeouts since he's been called up in 20 games. So, like... Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, one-to-one -one walk guy, basically. Yeah, last 10 games, eight walks to six strikeouts. He he works counts. He's got three home... Almost 1,000 OPS over the last 10 games. 250. Yeah, the average is, and the average is coming around. Well, yeah. the average is coming around. Another oh, dude, hit tonight. Dude, he's so. a... He's... Listen, he's an elite pitch... He's an elite, elite hitter, right? An elite hit tool. Ton of power. We talked about this with Brian Bayo. Look at Brian Bayo's September stats. He's got a sub-2 ERA. Guy's been right. unhittable. Right? right, and we talked about that when he got called up, how just unlucky he had been in that first call-up stint of his. And since he's come off the IL, six starts now under two ERA in September. It's been he's been or in August September rather. He's just been lights out. So Red Sox guy starting to come around. But Cassis on this lady twenty two hundred feels like a chalk play. Uh, yeah, just given the options there. Second base, a lot of the top uh, guys are on the injured it list. It is disgusting, John. <laughs> um, it is disgusting. Yeah, don't know where you would want to go here. Nick Gordon. 2800 is probably like the first and last. Yeah, line. you're probably, honestly, you're right. You're probably just locking in. All right, let's just get this out of the way now, right? We're going to play Cassis. Here's the problem, though. We're going to play right? Nick Gordon. Yeah, I'm listening. We now are playing Nick Gordon. We are basically saying we're not playing Gilito. Yes. That's basically what we're saying. I think we're playing and Suarez. That's I, fine. I think that's, well, I think that may be the pitching we go. But also, well, on a slate like this, Giolito isn't throwing shutouts, right? So Nick Gordon right. can hit a home run, and that still be okay if Is we want to go. Is there anyone else? I mean, Harold Castro has three straight three hit games. Yeah, could be. I'm just no, I'm I, trying well, to scrape something else. I don't yeah. know if there is anything else. David Bodie. I, I'm fine with Harold Castro. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Bodie's back up. Guy Two, hits lefties. We know that. Eight twenty OPS over his last ten. Yeah, like. Yeah. But Nick Gordon's like we love, but we like Nick Gordon. No, we no, we've been suggesting Nick Gordon when it's a, been like yeah. big slates. So. We'll see what we'll see what the lineup comes out to. But I got Cassis sure. and Gordon in there for now. Works. Works. Third base, so you have Devers as your top price guy. 
Six thousand dollars. Yeah, huh? yeah. It was a big sad last night. Even though he had two hits and two RBIs, you know, he could have had our had bases loaded opportunity early in the game and didn't come through. Gunner though at thirty eight hundred. Struggling, struggling right now. Yeah, he homered two nights ago. But, you know, overall, you're right. That's about the only thing he's done since then. Let's see. Nick Eaton, maybe? 321, 804. Six yeah. stolen bases last 10 games. It is a lot on the mound, though. That's a lot of stolen bases. It is a lot of stolen her. bases. 11 stolen bases in 37 games for Nick Eaton. Or Nate Eaton, rather. Is he going to be, like, the, the everyone's, like, you're going to see an early draft season, like, sneaky 30 stolen base guy, and everyone's just going to say Nick, Nate Eaton yeah. next draft season? Yeah. Hunter sure. Dozier, 281, 874, last 10 games, homeward yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like, as much as we like you, Rod, we didn't, like, give him, like, rate, like... No, with rate, those four starting pitchers that were usable, so... He's definitely hittable, so I'm well, definitely... What's Dozier versus okay. lefties? Does he have any... I know his, he probably doesn't have great-looking splits in general because he hasn't played very well this year, but you know, maybe there's, like, an um, 850 OPS there that we can hang on to. Uh, let us see what the split is here. Hunter Dozier. I don't want to click on your minor league stats. Against lefty, he's hitting 256, which is better. 743 OPS, which is better than 669. Yeah. Nice. Actually, more power against lefties. Right, well, we'll, or we'll, against righties, rather. Okay. Well, we'll memory bank it. But uh, maybe Nate Eaton again. The lefty on the mound yeah. kind of kills some of the stolen base upside. Bodie does have... The problem with Boat is we want to play Suarez here. So, like, I don't yeah. think we're going well, to we, Well, Harold Castro. Yeah, Harold Castro well. also with third base eligibility. So, it's like you spend up for you're spending you, up for Devers. I, we'll be able to get Devers. Yeah, I think we'll spend up for Devers. Because we can, we we're can, not spending we up can fit him there. Yeah. Bobby Witt versus Erod at 6K. Oh Xander versus Bondman. I, Boston Stack's going to be the chalk here, right? Yeah, so, Boston Stack's for sure the chalk. Xander's at 53. Andrew's at 4K, but he's been cool enough, finally. Well, well you skipped over Correa. And I just, I want to backtrack. I only sipped over Craig because you mentioned about wanting to play Giolito, but if, and well, we already have Gordon. So if we're not right. going to, I don't want to stack against Giolito if we're going to pitch well, him. So. Well, hold on. So if, yeah, let's, since we're using Gordon. Yeah. So these are Giolito's splits this year. So he's definitely been better against lefties, which obviously hurts our Gordon play. But sure. righties against Lucas Giolito, John. 328 average, 575 slug, 408 Woba. 17 home runs. Those are just righties. Yeah. One, 1. 1.88 home runs per nine innings. His strikeout rate is 22% compared to 31 against lefty. I mean, the guy... So would you rather play just... Harold Castro at second and then stick in... Correa at short? Correa at short. Could. We could. Let's see what it looks like there. You know? Yeah, I don't hate that. Harold Castro at 25. Correa at... 48. That does take, I mean, again, they're one off plays, so it's not killing anything we wanted to do. We're in on Ranger Suarez, right? I'm just going to lock Ranger Suarez in. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we'll figure out the rest of that afterwards. Outfield. I mean, unless there's other shortstops. No, I don't see any. Right. Probably no. I agree with you. Outfield. Uh, Harper's been terrible. Yep. But he's Bryce Harper. So, and Assad is Assad. <laughs> Let's see. Schwarber's at 5K. Riley Green yep. against Heasley. Could. Go, does yeah. go towards the... I mean, he hasn't been great either, but you have Heasley's, Castro in a lineup yeah, already, right? Like, yeah, So we stinks. remember when we said how bad Heasley was and he just dominated the Red Sox? Yeah. Like well, three he does starts stink. Ago. Yeah, but he stinks. The Red Sox just stunk that night. Well, like, okay, well, stop for a second. Oh, Heasley's been pretty good, He's huh? been pretty good lately. He had been horrible earlier in the year. A thousand percent agree. Gets call back up. I guess end of August Pretty and good. last three starts, three total earned runs, 19 mm. and two thirds innings. Yeah. Shout out. To, maybe Jonathan Heasley's turned a corner here. All right. He's faced Detroit in one of those starts, seven innings, two earned, only two strikeouts in that game though, but good, good find Johnny. Good find. Is Heasley I, sneaky? Like I retract my statement. Is Will he be sneaky against the Tigers? I don't know. Is he actually going to garner ownership? Maybe. Well, we have to make a decision whether we're either. Do we want to target guys against Giolito or guys against Heasley? The more I feel like I want to go guys against Giolito, right? Yeah, that's the more contrarian play for sure. Uh, yep. So we'll play. Yeah. Do we play Heasley then? Yeah, we could, and we could just play Nick Gordon. Or the, we had what's the name at third, didn't we? So we have Castro at second, which I'm still fine playing Castro as a one-off against our pitcher. Or we could Unless go. You... We could just go Erod on the other side of that and go him against Kansas City. Or we could flip it to Nick Gordon at second. Could flip it back to Nick Gordon at second. If we're 
you know, just getting yeah. down and dirty and just using twins against uh... sure. Back to the outfield now. Schwarber, Harper, Mullins against Evaldi. Tommy Pham leading off against Bonin could be a play. Let's see. Verdugo, you said Homer tonight. He's 4K. He's hitting, hitting cleanup, too, so a spot for him. Michael Taylor against Erod. Lefty for Michael Taylor, 2,900. Yeah, he's been bad of late, but he's he has gone through like multiple stretches this year where he's looked really good at the plate. So. And his splits against lefties are strong too this year, I believe. I don't hate it. I don't really see like a ton that I like. A Kill Badu against a righty. Kill Badu's been good since being called back. Nick Velasquez hit lefties, but he's kind of sucked for the Cubs. Austin Hayes has been good. Go there. Veerling's hitting 314, but it's no no power. It's your boy. I mean, we have $5,300 per player for a catcher out in two outfielders. Do we just play like real move um, against Assad? Probably or been Salvi the against best. Erod? But Salvi Most. hasn't been good versus lefties, right? Isn't it? No, I think Salvi has been good against, has lefties. Been good against lefties. Let's just confirm. Salvador Perez against left handed pitching this year. And the split. Tells me, John, that he yeah he's hitting well against lefties. Right. Eight thirty nine OPS, two sixteen ISO, three fifty five Woba. Right. Well, I'll throw Salvi in a catcher because we just have the money. We might just have like leftover money. I feel like we just play Harper too because we have the money. Like I know he hasn't been hitting well, but like also he's Bryce Harper. Or would you rather do Schwarber, who also hey. no, only Schwarber's, hits home uh, runs? No, Harper's fine. Harper's fine. All right. That leaves us forty seven hundred dollars. We don't really have any stacks going on here. We have a two-man Minnesota, a two-man Boston. Do you want? Do you want to do Verdugo? Verdugo, yeah. Yeah, because then it will give us what three, the two-four in Boston lineup or the three-four. It gives us two-four-six. Two-four-six with Cassis, yeah. And then we have a bunch of. And then we can just get whoever. We have seven hundred bucks left over if we wanted to move. Let's see, seven hundred dollars, thirty-six hundred dollars outfield. We move off of. If we moved off of Taylor. We can go, JD, and just do like a four-man Boston. No, we don't have the money. We're six hundred short. Oh, sorry. We're thirty six hundred bucks. We could do Kike, who hits eighth. One off of Austin Hayes. One off of. Do we need to? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think we need to. Nah, I don't think we need to. Okay, we'll go. My, we'll go back to Taylor here. Play somewhere with Perez. Doesn't he hit like six? Michael Taylor. So. Something like that. Yeah. All right. So then that's what we got. What's your What's your home run call in this four game slate? Aaron Judge. Not on the I will go. What Red Sox is going to homer here, John? Tristan Cassis. Okay. I was going to go there, but you can go there. I'll go Correa. I'll do it that way. Carlos Correa for me. Tristan Cassis for you. Home run call from the lineup. Sorry, I stole, sorry, I stole your thunder yeah, there. That's okay. But... Our current lineup Ranger Suarez. And we have, we're going here. Jonathan Heasley against Detroit. Catcher, we get Salvi Perez. We got Tristan Cassis at first. We have Nick Gordon at second. Rafi Devers at third, Carlos Correa at short, Michael Taylor in the outfield, Bryce Harper, and Alex Verdugo. That is our lineup. Four games, 1 p.m. start. Every questions, get us in the Discord. And James and I will catch you guys later.